Hey everyone, it's Dustin Nolf with Keller Williams Realties, the Dustin Nolf team and the Full House LLC, Pittsburgh Property Management. How are we all doing today? Today we are going to look at for sale by owner, follow-up systems and marketing routines. So we did a video on this about expired listings and the uh, plan that my team implements to follow up with expired listings. And it was the, the plan that I used to pull in 17 expired listings in one month. And those 17 expired listings actually came in from my email marketing campaign. So it, it was pretty much all email marketing. We were hitting them from all the other angles. So I'm sure that like the branding aspect of it was, it, you know, came into play there as well. But, um, so we talk about that in another video. If you want to see that, that video, there's going to be a link to it below here. Um, before we get started, if you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe below. I'm doing two to four videos a week on real estate sales, real estate team building, real estate investing, and wealth building. So if you like those topics, then you'll want to subscribe and hit the notification bell for this uh, channel. So, and before we get started as well, I've got some great links to books below that have helped me as far as my mindset goes, as far as growing my business and realizing time and people leverage and that sort of stuff. So check out those books below. Um, and the, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, I mean, I push this in any of my sales videos. I really push that book. What we're going to be talking about today is for sale by owner marketing campaign that's based off of the uh, concepts in that book. So check it out, um, buy it, read that book, use it as your real estate Bible if you're a sales agent. Whether or not you plan on building a team or being a millionaire real estate agent, that doesn't matter because that book is set up where you can kind of read to where you need to and then just leave it at that. So <clears throat> let's get rolling. So let's talk about our for, or for sale by owner follow-up techniques. Now here's the deal. I'm not professing to be a for sale by owner guru. I am definitely, I, I would like to um, be a little bit big ego here. I am definitely an expired listing guru. I can tell you that. For sale by owners, I've done some of them and actually I have generated a couple of listings from the same stuff that we're going to look at today. I don't focus on for sale by owners though. Um, however, when I when I have focused on them in the past, I've had good results using these techniques. And it's it's not you know it's, this isn't rocket science, okay? It's marketing. It's simple marketing techniques, and this the same idea can be used to any market and get consistent results. Okay, this isn't just about for sale by owners. You can take these techniques and use them um, to any sort of marketing demographic and get consistent results as long as you consistently implement okay so you got to take consistent action to get consistent results remember that so let's look at this so for sale by owners we use a system called mojo you can use vulcan 7 select i love vulcan 7 select um, it's it's a little bit more expensive i think than mojo which is why we don't use it anymore um, they they both get you similar sort of sorts of results uh, I think Red X as well gets you the same sort of results. I'm finding like Mojo and Vulcan 7 seem to be the bigger, the, you know, the most used ones. But they're going to give you expired and for sale by owner data every morning. And you can load that into your CRM system and then that's where you like really take action is through your CRM system. Um, so we use our CRM that we're using is Real Geeks. Real Geeks is an extremely affordable CRM. I've been through like six or seven CRMs over like eight years. Um, some of it because I was a fool and you know bought into the, those big sales pitches on the $2,000 a month CRMs. Uh, other part of it was I was using a, a CRM that they ended up shutting down and we had to make a decision on something quickly and we ended up not liking the system we were on so we had to switch again. But in any case, I, was, I used Real Geeks like mm, seven years ago maybe and then ended up coming back to it just now because it's extremely affordable. So number one, it's extremely affordable. Um, number two, it does pretty much everything I need it to do. And just because like it's not necessarily pretty, but it's pretty easy to use. 
Um, so, it, you know, a CRM needs to do some basic things, and they all pretty much do the same thing, so you may as well pick the one that uh, you like to use the best, and it's also the most, most affordable. If you want to check out Real Geeks, I do have a link below. It's only 150, or it'll save you $150 if you go through that link if you sign up for Real Geeks. So check out that link below if you are interested in signing up for a CRM. There are, you know, most brokers do offer a CRM. One of the things you want to watch out for, I come from an old school brokerage and, you know, all of my data that I had in that CRM, when I left that brokerage, they, it was theirs. They took it, okay? So if you're feeding your broker's database and you're working for an old school broker and you decide to leave at some point, you may lose all of your contacts and that's why you might want to have your own CRM, not to be, you know, Mr. Negative Nancy. So <clears throat> let's look at this. For sale by owner, step number one, get their data from Mojo or Vulcan 7 or some other resource like that, okay? Get the data. It's easier to get the data there. If you're broke and you don't want to pay for that, go on Craigslist and look for for sale by owners. There's a ton of them. Uh, it depends on what area you're in because some areas use Craigslist more than others, but the last time I logged into Craigslist in Pittsburgh, we had over 1,400 for sale by owners in the Allegheny County area. All right, so get the for sale by owner data. Call the for sale by owners, okay? You need to call them. And when you call them, so the whole idea here is that we want to hit them from multiple angles and we want them to remember our name. So when you call them, like our agents, our agents need to say, hi, this is Joe Schmo from the Dustin Nolf team calling you about your for sale by owner. How's it going with that? The, the whole idea is that we want to brand them. It's not necessarily about getting the appointment right now. It's about branding the team so they know the name, okay? So we're going to call them and we're going to put over here brand. And you're going to get like, whether you're doing this for expires or for sale by owners or for sphere of influence or whatever, the brand, you want your name out there. If you're an individual agent, use your, your, your name needs to be on everything, right? If you're working for a team, the team's got a bigger brand than you, okay? Hide your ego, push your ego down and say the team's name. Hi, my name's Joe Schmo. I'm with the Dustin Nolf team. You may have heard of us. How are you doing today, right? Push the team name because the team name is going to be on signs and all this other stuff that's going out to these people. Okay, so we're going to call them. We're going to follow our for sale by owner scripts. We're going to try to get an appointment, but we're also going to make sure we give them our brand. Okay. We're going to mail to them that same day. So we want to send them a piece of mail. Whether we talk to them or not, we need to send them a piece of ma mail. So again, it's, it's going to be about branding, but we also need to ha give them something that's going to stick around too. So we want it to be sticky. And what I like to use is I have a magnet, like it's just a simple business card size magnet that's got our team information on it. If I could find one right now, I'd, I'd pop it up. Yeah, here we go. So it's, it's just a simple magnet, just like, you know, your local plumber would send to you or give to you that you can put right there that you put in the, the piece of mail that goes out because what people do, they love the magnets. I know I do it when I get a magnet, I throw it up on the fridge and I think, well, if I ever need a plumber or electrician or whatever, I know this is on the fridge so I can go get it. So they might be, you know, they're for sale by owner, but most for sale by owners uh, end up working with a real estate agent. 98% of all transactions in the United States involve at least one real estate agent, okay? Uh, and I think it's like 70% of for sale by owners end up listing with an agent at some point. It might be, you know, it might be lower than that now because it's a, it was a strong market recently. So we're going to send them a piece of mail that's got something sticky with it. And as far as the piece of mail goes, I like to be direct, okay? I don't like to screw around with for sale by owners. This is why I don't like for sale by owners so much is because like agents will call them and say, hey, I might have a buyer for your house. Can I come take a look at it? And then they go and then it's like, they're trying to be their friend and they're trying to give them value and that sort of stuff. And then it becomes a follow-up game. 
like I don't want to have to go to three appointments to get a listing. I want to go to one appointment and get a listing. That's my ideal scenario. Okay, so that's why I don't necessarily like for sale by owners because there's a lot of follow up. So when I do work for sale by owners though, I go straight in for the kill. So I'm going to call and I'm going to say, hey, I noticed that you're for sale by owner. How long have you had on the market? Uh, we just put on the market like two days ago. Great. How's it going? Well, we're getting a lot of showings. That's fantastic. How long do you think you're going to give it before you hire an agent? I'm just going to go in for that. Ask them that question. That's a great question because they've usually already thought about it. Uh, well, we're probably going to give it another week. We really got to move though, so we're going to give it another week and then we got to get out of town. We've got to move to our new house and get stuff going there, so we're going to hire an agent at that point. Great, I'd like to interview for the job position. Are you available tomorrow at this time or can I meet with you at this time? So then you're just going straight in for a listing appointment instead of, you know, being Mr. or Mrs. Passive aggressive, aggressive and trying to like win their affection through appointments and, you know, personality. Um, that's what I like to do if they say, we're not going to list for an, with an agent at all. Great, I'll, I'll follow up with you in a couple weeks and see how it's going. How's that sound? Yeah, okay, if you want to. All right, well now I'm putting them on a follow-up call and I'm going to send them a piece of ma mail. The piece of mail is going to have statistics. I always go straight in for the kill. It's going to be statistics on, okay, here's three reasons why you might want to consider listing your home with an agent. Number one. 70% of all real estate related lawsuits are due to improper seller disclosure law. Do you have a legal seller disclosure for your property? Question mark. Those are the type of things that you're gonna to wanna to put in that mailer. So you're going straight to the point, you're giving them statistics that are a good reason for them to list with an agent as opposed to continue marketing on their own. So that, that first piece of, piece of mail is gonna be powerful and it's gonna have something sticky with it. For e uh, email. And we're going to say eight by eight, okay? So this is following the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, eight by eight. And I, I can't, I can't remember what eight by eight. I think it's like eight contacts in eight days. Um, I, I'm, I'm really kind of bad on that one because I, I've turned it into my own type of eight by eight. I want to look at eight contacts in eight weeks is is how I like to do it. So I don't want to be too, you know, too pushy. But we're already doing some of this stuff anyway. So they're going to get a lot of touches within that first week anyway. So we're going to do the email 8x8. They're going to go on a campaign where they get one email a week, and that emails are going to have call to actions on them. And I showed some emails that we have as example for our expired uh, campaign. And what we do is we, we try to give them some information where, you know, it might say, like, for our expired campaign, we, could, we can use this same blog post in the For Sale by Owner campaign, here's three reasons why your home won't sell. And that's it, and then you give them a link to that blog post. And they can go to that blog post and they can read about the top three reasons why a property is not gonna sell. And then there's call to actions throughout that blog post for them to either contact us for an appointment or they can get an evaluation on their home, et cetera, et cetera. So the emails are gonna say stuff, stuff like that. And then they're also gonna have a call to action in the email that says, are you ready to list your home with an agent if so, please reply to this email and let me know, does this time work or does this time work, right? So you're going to have a straight call to action in there. Okay, so anyway, we're going to do eight, eight emails over eight weeks, okay? And then you're going to, you're going to mix that with calls. So I'm going to put calls again here as number five. <clears throat> so these are your follow-up calls. You're going to want to follow up. Same thing, you're, you're opening with the brand, and then, hey, I talked to you two weeks ago and you said you weren't interested in listing with an agent. I just wanted to call and see how it's going with that property. Have you sold it yet? All right? So, between, well, between all of these, you're going to be hitting them like two or three times a week, maybe more. And then you want to go to an email campaign so a second part of an email campaign where you might have a part two starts or you might just have one email campaign that ends up turning into a 12 direct i'm going to say it's 12 direct it's not direct mail it's it is just email it stays email right so then that email campaign after the first eight weeks turns into one email per month then okay 
and you can follow up then with a piece of mail this would be kind of like in the middle of all of this so one month after you get started uh, so it would be right in the middle of this email campaign you'd be sending out another piece of mail I don't I don't know I don't think you're gonna need anything more than this though because most for sale by owners like they're either gonna be listed or sold by like the second month a lot of times so you might you know but if you get to this point where you're putting them on a month to month email campaign <clears throat> you know they're probably unsubscribing and you might find out that they've already sold the house or whatever and you've already removed them from your database anyway so that's the idea uh, if that I hope that was helpful for you if you have any questions let me know if you could below in the comments put your biggest aha from watching this video what did you what did you take away from this uh, if you liked what you saw give us a thumbs up subscribe below and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of the videos as we post them and I've got some cool links below if you're interested in uh, you know signing up for real geeks or getting some of those books that I've discussed below that all the links are below just to help yourself there's also links to some other videos that you may find interesting as well so thanks for watching see you again soon